From the 1st of October 2025, the Streetworks UK protocol comes into place for all streetworks operating under immediate urgent, immediate emergency, minor, standard, major works when the permit or notice is only required due to traffic management purposes or equivalent notice periods for works on private land. The protocol requires a set of changes to current working practices and the chapters in this video provide an outline of the requirements for individuals currently carrying out streetworks duties. It is a legal requirement to follow the requirements of the protocol which are outlined in this video. Compliance will be checked and non-compliance enforced by the Environment Agency. Under the Streetworks UK protocol, there is a requirement to carry out a small percentage of tests to check the accuracy of the site assessment that has been completed previously. The responsibility of taking these samples may be with the client or the contractor and this will be decided on each contract individually. In this video, we are going to show this process starting with collecting the material we want to sample test. However, you cannot simply take samples from one or two sites. You must adopt a randomized approach to selecting the sites you are going to use for sample testing and must be able to demonstrate how you propose to do this. Sample testing must be carried out by a trained individual and samples taken from each stockpile of segregated waste. During your training, it will have been explained how to take a sample and what equipment is required. There is also more details on this in the sampling requirements document. Here are the tools that you may need when collecting your samples. Nitrile gloves, trowel, permanent marker pen, cool boxes, bubble wrap, courier labels, sample chain of custody forms, camera and notepad. You will also need the following sampling jars, tubs and bags. One one kilogram white tub, one 250 milliliter amber jar, one 60 milliliter amber jar, one one kilogram sealable plastic bag. To avoid cross-contamination between sampling different excavated waste types, trowels must be cleaned by pushing into the soil a number of times before collecting the sample or alternatively rinsing with deionized water. Gloves must also be changed between each sample. So this is the actual sample process. Take one sample from each type of material stockpile. For example, if there's a pile of asphalt and bitumen, take one sample from that pile. If there are other types of materials, take a separate sample from each pile. For example, one sample from the asphalt pile, another from the sub-base pile. Samples must be taken before the materials leave the site, within 24 hours of excavation. It's best practice for sampling the material as it's dug up and stockpiled on the same day or shift. Each sample should be made up of material from two to three different spots in the stockpile, including one from the outside and one from the inside. All parts go into one container to make a single sample. Each stockpile should only contain material from up to 20 meters of excavation to keep the sample consistent. Take one sample for every 10 cubic meters of material. To give you an idea of the number of samples to be taken, less than 10 cubic meters equals one sample. 11 to 20 cubic meters equals two samples. 21 to 30 cubic meters equals three samples. Do not sample material from the excavation walls or floor if it's going to stay in place. Ensure that all sample amber jars are filled to capacity. Once you have collected the material, it now needs to be sent to a UCAS accredited laboratory for further testing. Place the collected samples in a cool box with ice packs or a fridge immediately. Before collection, protect samples using bubble wrap or similar packaging inside the cool box or wrap each container individually. Complete a sample chain of custody form before samples are collected or removed from the site. And that's it.